Over the past decade, global stocks have returned 12.4% on average in Canadian dollar terms as of June 30th, 2020. Canadian bonds also had an impressive run over the same period, returning 4.6% on average. Going forward though, investors may need to rein in their return expectations for planning purposes and to avoid disappointment. Stock market valuations are significantly higher than they were 10 years ago, indicating lower expected returns over the next decade. And bond yields have also dropped to record lows, implying much lower fixed income returns in future years. I'm Justin Bender, Portfolio Manager at PWL Capital. In this episode of the Canadian Portfolio Manager, I'll show you how to estimate a reasonable 10 to 15 year expected return for your asset allocation ETF. I'll be focusing on the Vanguard asset allocation ETFs for this analysis, but you can also assume similar returns for your iShares asset allocation ETFs. Our first step will be to estimate a future inflation rate. We'll use this inflation expectation to adjust our expected real stock market returns to nominal figures in the next step. To obtain this figure, we'll head to the Bank of Canada website where we can compare the yield of a long-term Government of Canada notional bond, which includes an inflation expectation, with the yield of a real return bond of similar maturity, which excludes inflation. The difference between these two figures provides us with the market's ballpark estimate of future inflation. And similar to the PWL white paper methodology, we'll remove any short-term yield discrepancies by using the 24-month average of the yield difference between them. As of June 30th, 2020, the average difference, or long-term inflation expectation, was around 1.4%. Now that we have our future inflation expectation, we'll estimate Canadian and foreign stock market returns for the next 10 to 15 years. Forecasting long-term stock returns is a bit of a mugs game. Vanguard published a paper in 2012 where they examined 15 metrics to determine whether any of them had the ability to predict future stock returns. They found the most predictive power in valuation metrics, such as a price-to-earnings ratio, but they were only meaningful over long time horizons, and even then, the price-to-earnings ratios only explain the variation in real stock returns about 40% of the time. The best valuation metric examined in this study was the cyclically adjusted price to earnings ratio. Also known as the Schiller Cape Ratio, it was named after Nobel laureate and Yale professor of economics Robert Schiller. The Cape Ratio takes a stock's current value and divides it by the average inflation adjusted company earnings over the previous 10 years. A 10 year period is used to ensure that profits are averaged over more than one earnings cycle and the inflation adjustment ensures that company profits are still comparable, even during periods of high inflation. Star Capital publishes monthly global CAPE ratios for various countries and regions, so I've used these CAPE figures for our analysis, weighting them based on their current global market cap weights. We can obtain an earnings yield for any given stock market by taking the inverse of its CAPE ratio, which simply means dividing one by the CAPE. This can be thought of as a stock market's expected real return. And as these are real return expectations, we'll still need to add in our 1.4% inflation expectation so you can compare them to the future notional returns reported on your investment account statements. As of June 30th, 2020, Canadian stocks had a CAPE of 19.6. Dividing one by the CAPE gives us an expected real return of 5.1% or an expected nominal return of 6.5% after adding in our 1.4% expected inflation. Foreign stocks had a CAPE of 24. Dividing one by the CAPE gives us an expected real return of 4.2%, or an expected nominal return of 5.6% after adding in our 1.4% expected inflation. So Canadian stocks are expected to return 6.5% over the next 10 to 15 years, and foreign stocks are expected to return 5.6%. If these figures seem low to you, remember they come after a decade of incredible performance, when global stock markets returned an annual average of over 12% in Canadian dollar terms. It's also interesting to note that the US stock market has an even higher CAPE of 28.8, indicating low future real and nominal expected returns 
of only 3.5% and 4.9% respectively. This is no surprise as the US stock markets have been on a tear for the past 10 years, delivering an annual average return of 16.5% in Canadian dollar terms. While you should not use these lower future expected returns to engage in market timing, they could further justify a generally sound approach to diversifying your equity holdings beyond just the US. If lower future expected stock market returns have got you down, prepare to be even more disappointed with your bonds. For the Canadian bond portion of the Vanguard Asset Allocation ETFs, the underlying bond's average yield to maturity is our best estimate of future bond returns. This average sits at a meager 1.3% as of the end of June 2020. The Vanguard Asset Allocation ETFs also include currency hedged foreign bonds, and it's a bit more complicated to estimate their expected returns. If we simply use their current yield to maturity, US bonds would be expected to return 1.2%, and international bonds would be expected to return only 0.5%. But currency hedged foreign bonds are also expected to provide a positive or negative hedge return from their currency hedging strategies, which tend to bring their returns more in line with our domestic bonds. So to simplify our analysis, we can just assume the currency hedged foreign bonds are expected to return the same as Canadian bonds after all adjustments, or 1.3%. Now, whether you invest within a TFSA, RRSP, or taxable account, your asset allocation ETF will be subject to foreign withholding taxes, creating an additional drag on your portfolio's returns. When you hold your ETF in a taxable account, you'll receive a T3 slip at tax time, indicating the amount of foreign tax that you've already paid. This acts as an IOU from the tax collector, which is a good thing. When you hold your ETF in a TFSA or RSP, you receive no T3 slip, so the foreign withholding taxes you've paid are lost forever. In taxable accounts, the unrecoverable portion of these foreign withholding taxes are negligible. In TFSA and RSP accounts, the annual tax drags are noticeably higher. They range from around 0.1% for the Vanguard Conservative Income ETF portfolio, with ticker symbol VCIP, to around 0.2% for the Vanguard All Equity ETF portfolio, with ticker symbol VEQT. If you're interested in estimating the foreign withholding tax drag of your ETFs, you can download my Foreign Withholding Tax Ratio Calculator, available on the Canadian Portfolio Manager blog. So once you add in the Management Expense Ratio, or MER, for Vanguard's Asset Allocation ETFs, annual costs increase in the range of 0.4% for the most conservative asset allocation ETF to around 0.5% for the most aggressive. After we adjust each expected asset class return by its weight within the asset allocation ETFs, and we decrease their gross expected return by their product fees and foreign withholding taxes, we end up with the following net expected nominal return figures. VCIP, which has an 80% bond, 20% equity asset mix, is expected to return 1.9%. VCNS, which has a 60% bond, 40% equity asset mix, is expected to return 2.7%. VBAL, which has a 40% bond, 60% equity asset mix, is expected to return 3.6%. VGRO, which has a 20% bond, 80% equity asset mix, is expected to return 4.5%. And VEQT, which has a 100% equity asset mix, is expected to return 5.4%. As mentioned earlier, Similar expected returns would also apply to the five iShares Asset Allocation ETFs, XINC, XCNS, XBAL, XGRO, and XEQT. All this said, the future is uncertain. Highly uncertain. It's important to keep that in mind when considering expected returns, even over the long term. Over the next 10 to 15 years, actual returns on these asset allocation ETFs and any other investment could vary widely from these rough estimates. Perhaps the key takeaway from all these calculations is that, even with an all-equity portfolio, you're probably best off if you don't expect years and years of double-digit returns going forward. At the same time, we've enjoyed a solid ride for the past decade, which may or may not last for a while longer. In the face of eternal uncertainty about what the future has in store, 
The wise investor builds an efficient, globally diversified portfolio that reflects their personal long-term goals and reasonable expectations about what markets have to offer. Then they sit tight for the ride. I'm Justin Bender of PWL Capital, and this is the Canadian Portfolio Manager YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to share it with your friends, family, or colleagues.